Trampoline Terror for the Sega Genesis by NCS and DreamWorks, released in 1990. In Japan, this was intended for release as Explode Star, but ultimately it got cancelled, hence why it was brought to the US. Contra Force, aka Arc Hound, much? Anyways, let's dive right the hell in already. Okay, whoa, let's just hold everything for a second. Before I kick things off as always, I'd like to extend my utmost acknowledgements, or shoutouts in Cool Kids Talk, to Casey Desmond from Cosmic Microwave Background, Don Panzini from Revere, Daniel Douglas, another local actor, Rich Kenneth Thomas Hawk, aka Hawkeye, and Lisa Vidal from Star Lab, Urban Cyclist and Radio Personality Ashley Bottoms, Fitness Expert Aaron Bailey, Brain Scratch Commentaries composed of Ryan Malice, alias Nairman214, Ted Weissen, Louis Medeiros, aka Solaris Paradox, and of course some call me Johnny Ortiz, Dave White and Joe Redford from GameSack, Alicia Jean Orsini Lobita from Women in Film and Video New England, and Larson and Laura Hannon from The Dead Collective, Alyssa Brock, Kim Chin, and Stephen Del Rose, also from the same group, Toby Merrill from Harvard Legal Services Center, Markel Valdez, Deidre Fisher from Baltimore, Brina McLean, and Mike Fancy Lad Lindquist from Replayed, Greg Bates from Burgermaster of the North Shore, Dom Cerulli from Sudden Impact, the Amoroso siblings, namely Tessa and Adam, as usual, Mary Aurora Pearl and Kim Paquette, Kathy Bisbee, Ryan and Kara Marie Kaminsky Kiliani, Joe Space Kappa, and Christina Walker from the Backlog and PK Bloggin, the Bit Bar staff, Hall, Clark, Koltoff, and Allen, Darren Fearson from Pittsfield, Isabella Jenks from West Virginia, Kerry Forbes from Quincy, Lauren Hurley from Methuen, Elisa Amador, and finally the Bummer City Historical Society, namely James Ikeda, Louis Rowe, and Ariana Enos, amongst many. With these out of our system, onto the central plotline. The radiant glorious planet of Ahas has been laid siege upon by a mysterious alien force, namely the Balos Empire, thanks entirely to the introduction of a 33-story superfortress composed of various otherworldly beings and hazards in the form of explosive floor grids and trampolines. And if that didn't top it off enough, the planet's rightful queen has been held captive. Now the fate of both the one's grateful planet and its sole ruler rests in the hands, stunts, and sharp wits of a humanoid daredevil gymnast, the Trampoline Terror, as he risks more than his ass to survive the chaos of the Balos' towering superfortress. Centering our main focus to the rudimentary gameplay aspect is a quirky standard strategic top view puzzle platformer romp akin to the likes of Lori Seal's Squeak, the short lived Nichi Butsu's Booby Kids, which by the way is based on Kid no Hore Hore Daisak Sen, or better yet, maybe, just maybe, Hudson Sauce Bomberman, or hell, Crater Maze anyone? in which you assume the role of the aforestated titular character, not only evading and or wiping out your foes, but also traversing through solid tiles, and of course, isn't it obvious, trampolines. And most importantly, walking over detonable floor switches, the latter of which is imperative for progression, considering there's no time limit. Control-wise, in addition to the standard D-pad used for making the trampoline terror, or whom I like to call T-squared, scurry about anywhere, aim here for jumping, and B deploys a special weapon, the P-ball, or power ball in full, for thwarting enemies, of which for the record, you can snag again after a one-time use. And take note, you're only allowed to carry no more than four. Should you happen to get near any foe, or vice versa, or if you accidentally fall through an open gap, expect to have a tombstone, in fact no, a whole assembly of tombstones erected and carved in your name, and no, I'm not talking about the fucking pizza brand. Now about the trampolines, whenever you jump on them, they change colors in between each leap, eventually resulting in their hair trigger worthy corrosion after turning red. One more accidental leap following that, your ass will plummet to the planet's surface below, or any other surface for that matter, minus a supply of emergency parachutes no less. Once you've managed to detonate all the floor switches, it's on to the next grid, and it's the customary rinse, lather, repeat spiel from here, but with more unexpected chaos that further awaits you. And while we're on that particular move point, depending on which specifically colored floor switches you've walked over, three, hell if four to be precise, red, yellow, green, and blue grant you an assorted myriad of results, running the game from instant next stage warps, an extra life and or more bonus points being awarded, or temporary time freeze and or invincibility periods. Before I forget, you can even use these same floor switches to trap and mow your foes the hell down, provided they detonate in sync with their arrival upon setting them off. And whatever you do, just keep all in the ass, cause you'll instantly fall through if you stand on set switches too goddamn long. Getting to the adversaries and hazards, the latter serving as either a help or a danger. They range from assorted droids, mech turtles, mini UFOs, living missiles, aka whom I like to call Bullet Bill's long lost dyslexic LSD addict Zap Cousin. Expect a serious red ass marathon with those piss ants, Robo Rabbits with shades, and of course alien humanoid dudes and dudettes to name several, all of which infinitely respawn no matter how many you've 86 let alone wiped out. Mess with disappearing tiles, teleport tiles, which by the way warp you from one section of a stage to another, and OMG, SMH, holy crap, red trampoline fields. Anyways, you shouldn't worry about too goddamn much from the get-go, as it's pretty much the same fucking routine in between each area, but in all seriousness, as stale and repetitive as many see the straightforward gameplay procedure turning out to be, following countless playthroughs and pattern memorizations, in reality, it's more of an invigorating and eye-opening experience like no other, and shifting gears right back into the control aspect, it's decent and fluid, given that they don't take much or a long to acclimate oneself with, not gonna lie, oh no. 
Concerning Trampoline Terrace Challenge, like most puzzlers out there, expect a lot of recycled quirks and elements in between each stage chain, notwithstanding the slight alterations applied throughout. From what I understand, the game's length is relatively short, considering there's only 33, with the last one featuring a boss confrontation, more of which many, yours truly included, wish that this game contained. But as long as you're able to maintain a stalwart, straight-laced mindset, and keen sense of awareness, mostly in terms of which perils to watch out for, where to continue traversing, or just flat-out avoid like a plague, the rest of your experience will definitely fall into place, that's for sure. And while we're at it, you're allowed to start off with 3, 4, or 5 lives via the options menu at the beginning, and 5 continues, which, depending on your skills, can be either reserved or wasted quicker than a lifetime supply of Chef Boyardee pasta. Take my advice, rely more on the former, while dismissing and ignoring the latter. In other words, don't slip the fuck up! As those the graphics might appear to be, even at first glance, for an early 16-bit title, I might add, they're actually far from a total eyesore. Your main character's sprite and those of his immense lineup of attackers are rather unique. The background and foreground elements are colorful and incandescent, in fact, so colorful and incandescent that it makes his or her eyes bleed, complete with the trademark 16-bit parallax scrolling for which the Genesis was known, as were both the NEC TurboGrafx-16 and the Super NES, in tandem with the flame effects at the title sequence and the countless thunderous explosion effects. Call them flat, dated, and horrendous. I call them glorious and eye-catching. I mean, seriously, need the hell I go on any further? In terms of music and sound, while there's no composer indicated within, I mean, there's no credits here at all. What do you know, another case of Factory Panic Boomer's Adventure Syndrome. Then again, it could be the work of Takashi Suzuki, who also orchestrated Target Earth, aka Assault Suits Delanos, released by the same two companies in the same goddamn year, no less. The overall soundtrack is nothing short of peppy, upbeat, and gratifying, despite how repetitive it can become at later intervals, except maybe for that hype-ass title theme, and the ominous and vehement final area theme, especially in between each stage chain. The sound effects could've used more pizzazz and intensity, but I've got no complaints whatsoever there. Concerning the replay value, thanks to each and every pivotal gameplay element and hints I've addressed thus far, to which and about which, as ever, I cannot stress enough in warning everyone to refer back, and in spite of all the mixed and negative attention this certain title's been gaining throughout the years, stemming from the flaws I've also addressed, and tandem with the clever mechanics and nerve twitch and intensity it lacks, unlike most classics out there, and even its less than convincing premise which barely did the game any favors during its retail period at all. Then again, the former might be on the same level as Factory Panic, but I fucking digress. Either way, it's no secret that you'll be vigorously immersed and constantly leaping into trampoline terror in more ways than you think. Therefore, consider yourself off your damn rocker to even think about leaving this oft overlooked title out in the blistering cold. Just like every other overlooked title I've covered in the past, it's easy to see why such a game as this never got the buzz that many others deserved, other than only being released here in our old US of A, and not anywhere else, despite what I just pointed out at the beginning. Notwithstanding these downsides, this game's still a rather idiosyncratic and jovial choice that'll have you endlessly jumping for joy, pun may be intended, and while some either love or hate it, it's still one which I highly recommend the hell out of. So what are you waiting for, the release of the next Little Big Planet, or the upcoming sequels to Shovel Knight, Song of the Deep, or Oniken? Shit, if there existed any. Do yourself a favor, hop straight to the Trampoline Terror, and indulge yourself like never before, or better yet, to quote GameStack's David White, just go ahead and buy your own trampoline, it's a lot more fun. But seriously, track it the hell down, give it a jump start, you won't regret it. Until then, this is the Hardcore Retro God proudly signing off. And if the following are watching this, a humble happy birthday to Sam Beto, Julie Drake Putnam, Brandon Michael Applegate, and especially Andrew Wiley from High Energy Vintage. Meow.